Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the online worship of Word and Sacrament of St. Paul's and Nativity Lutheran Churches in Reading, Pennsylvania on this second Sunday of Easter. We're glad that you are joining us and Jesus. We have several hospitalizations to share with you and to ask for prayers. D.G. of St. Paul's was transferred from the Reading Hospital to the Reading Hospital Rehabilitation Facility on Saturday. Leona S. of St. Paul's was admitted to the Reading Hospital, as was Pat U. of St. Paul's for an infection. Betty S. of Nativity was discharged from the Reading Hospital and is back at the Highlands. Please keep Keith W. in your prayers. He was the service manager at Steve Moyer Subaru and was in an accident. Also, if you would keep Cindy Allen's family in your prayers, her funeral will be held on Wednesday. St. Paul's Council will meet on Wednesday at 1 o'clock. And don't forget that next Sunday is Opus One's concert at 4 p.m. at Atonement Lutheran Church in Wyomissing. And now, dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us prepare our hearts to worship Jesus.
Long and dark is flying from the light to whom we give Lord and grace unending. Now the Queen of Seasons bright with the day of splendor, with the Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our risen Savior, the love of our Father in heaven, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourself know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath, oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is full fullness of joy, and in your right hand our pleasures forevermore. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though, um, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, 
You loved him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your, jo- of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. I have to share with all of you that Thomas is moving into the position of being my second favorite male disciple. I have to say, I think he gets a bad rap being tagged Doubting Thomas. You may recall that references about Thomas appear elsewhere in St. John's Gospel, and they are brave references to this disciple. In chapter 11, Jesus received word from Martha and Mary that their brother Lazarus is ill, and Jesus delays going to see them in Bethany. When he then tells the disciples that they will be going back to Judea, some of them said, but Rabbi, a short while ago, the Jewish authorities there tried to stone you and then ask of Jesus, and yet you are going back? It was Thomas who said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. As Jesus is having his last meal with his disciples on what we call Monday Thursday, Jesus is trying to prepare the disciples for his departure. He tells them that he is going to prepare a place for them 
and that they know where he, Jesus, is going. Thomas is the one, I believe, who is brave enough to speak up and to voice the question that they are all probably thinking. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Thomas's question, in a way, gives permission to ask questions, and the other disciples then begin to pick, speak up. And in chapter 14 of John's Gospel, we hear what their conversation is with the Lord. I very much appreciate Thomas's willingness to ask questions. It's part of what I love about being a Lutheran Christian, that we can ask the questions, that we can search for answers together. I've often told the story of when I was on internship at Hope. They would have a midweek service or, and service and meal, and then they would have activities. And so it came to be my first opportunity to be the one who was going to be leading Bible study. And you know, since I was the intern, I figured people expected me to have all of the answers. So I went into the room and I had a stack of books like this. And Pastor Keith said to me, what are you doing? I said, well, I have to have the answers. I'm the pastor, all right, the pastor in training. And he just looked at me and shook his head and went off and did something else. But one of the things that I learned to say was that I don't have all the answers. We don't have all the answers. But one of the things that I love about our faith is that we can wrestle with it and try to figure it out together. So in today's gospel, we come to chapter 20. Where is Thomas? He is not there. Why wasn't he with the rest of them locked in the house because of fear? Well, maybe Thomas is braver than the rest of them. Maybe Thomas is more curious than the rest of them. And he is out there looking for Jesus. Because after all, they have heard the declaration of the women that they had seen the risen Lord. Hmm. So Thomas isn't there. The other disciples, the 10 of them, are there. Remember, by this point, Judas is, has died. So when the male disciples told Thomas that Jesus had come to them, Jesus, I mean, I'm sorry, Thomas wanted proof. He wanted to see for himself. And a week later, Jesus comes to them again bringing his peace to them. And Jesus knows exactly what it is that Thomas needs in order to believe. Jesus knows what we need too. And Jesus places that need before us, working through other people. But often I think that we are too busy, too distracted, to hear or see the messengers that Jesus gives to us. Maybe we too are in need of being locked in a room without distractions so we can hear what our Lord is saying to us. As we heard in the reading of, from 1 Peter, we know that although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Faith is believing in what we do not see, and we believe in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Oh, Christ, you spoke.
touch your hands inside, nor follow where you draw. But in your promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God. Help them, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. For you, O resurrected Lord, are found in means divine beneath the water and the word, beneath the bread and wine. And when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, may we behold you as you are with full and endless sun. God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ Jesus. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and, and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the women at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. As you breathed your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains. Strengthen us to counter the effects of pollution and destruction. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You prepared the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our community's leaders. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As you met the disciples on the road to Emmaus, show us your presence along our journeys. Bless our doubts and questions. Provide trusting and safe relationships for all ages to nurture our connection to you and one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, 
almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Let us share a sign of our Lord's peace with one another. Peace be Gladys, with you. the peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Peace be with you always. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary, our duty and our great joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Simon Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, And with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. holy, O God, the fountain of all holiness. You bring light from darkness, life from death, speech from silence. We worship you for our lives and for the world you give us. We thank you for the new world to come and for the love that will rule all in all. We praise you for the grace shown to Israel, your chosen, the people of your promise, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the memory of the fathers and mothers, the homecoming from exile, and the prophet's words that will not be in vain. In all this, we bless you for your only begotten Son, who fulfilled and will fulfill all your promises. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, shed for all people, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thanks be to God. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the incarnation of your Son, his human birth and the covenant he made with us. We remember the sacrifice of his life, his eating with outcasts and with sinners, and his acceptance of death. But chiefly on this day, we remember his rising from the tomb, his ascension to the seat of power, and his sending of the holy and life-giving spirit. We cry out for the resurrection of our lives when Christ will come again in beauty and power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we and all who share in this bread and cup may be united in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, 
may enter the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, and may receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. God has prepared a holy feast for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us keep the feast. Alleluia. the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. Uh, and this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. Gladys, the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. Pastor, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. O God of love, you bind us to yourself in this sacrament and strengthen us through this meal for service to the world. Guide us by your spirit that we may forever witness to the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of life. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you grace. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now and may the peace of the risen Christ go with you. We go to spread the good news. Christ is risen and living in our hearts.